So with the War Within expansion being a few months old, most of the new gold farms aren't making a ton of gold anymore in a similar way to a majority of the previous expansions. All of the new gold farms are farmed very heavily and very quickly and then all of their prices tank and usually a few months within every new expansion, people who want to continue to make a lot of gold usually start throwing in a lot of old expansion gold farms. So that's what I want to go over in this video. The farm that I have used for years and has been the most consistent gold farm since this was released. And a disclaimer before we get into the rest of the video, this farm is focused around transmog items. So if you're someone that doesn't like farming transmog to make gold, this isn't a farm for you, but this farm is so strong and so consistent that you'll be able to make more gold per time spent than the majority of other farms in this game. But you are gonna be selling transmog items, so it's gonna take a little bit longer to sell the items than most other things you would be selling. And not only has this farm been incredibly strong for years, but because of one of the new hero talent choices, if you can do this farm on a death knight, this farm is much stronger than it's ever been before. And we'll go over that a little later in the video. Now this farm is going to revolve around the island expedition system from the Battle for Azeroth expansion. The system is very simple. You queue up for these island expeditions and you just run around killing all of the enemies you can find to fill up a meter. Once that meter is filled, that round is over and you get some randomized rewards which can be transmog and then you'll also get a currency that you can buy even more transmog with. That's the very simple version and that's pretty much all you need to know when you're a max level character. You are going against a group of other NPCs, but none of that really matters because you're so high level that you're killing everything so quickly anyway. That's all you're going to be doing. Running around, killing all of the enemies, focus on killing any of the elites or rares you come across, and once you're done with the match, rinse and repeat. And you can also solo queue for this so you can instantly get in these, and they're not really considered instances, so you also don't have the 10 lockout per hour, so you should be able to infinitely farm this if you really want to just go and farm this for hours on end. And there's two ways you're able to get items from this farm to go sell to other players. First off, completing any island expedition will give you one or a handful of bags with a currency in them. And then you'll also just randomly be getting transmog items, primarily being transmog sets, transmog weapons, and pets. You can also get a handful of mounts, but those aren't able to be sold. And one of the really big reasons why this farm is so good is because there are hundreds and hundreds of different sellable transmog items from this farm. And a lot of them are still very valuable. There's not really any transmog items from this that are super rare, but just because of how many items there actually are, some of them end up being a bit more rare, and then some of them that look a lot cooler end up being a lot more valuable. And there is also a system with island expeditions that the different maps you play on cycle every week, also meaning that the transmog you can get at the end of the run also cycles on a week, but in any given week, you're still able to get dozens and dozens of different transmog pieces. So it really just comes down to farming a bit every week so you can build up a transmog library of all of these different items. Because with there being so many different transmog items, there are a lot of a very highly sought after transmog that go for hundreds of thousands of gold apiece. Now, before we get into the rest of the items you're going to be farming for, you probably want to know what's the most efficient way to do this farm. Now, first off, once you go to either of the main cities in Battle for Azeroth and find the NPC that allows you to queue for island expeditions, he's also going to have solo queue versions. There's going to be normal, heroic, and mythic. Make sure you're always queuing for mythic once you're max level. Again, you're just going to overpower everything, so it doesn't really matter. But mythic will give you more items, and more specifically, you can get more bags of currency from from doing the mythic difficulty. So always queue for mythic. But the best class to do this farm on is a frost or unholy death knight because of one of their new hero talent choices. Now I would generally recommend using a frost death knight. You can just howling blast everything, puts a dot on everything, and it'll kill pretty much everything in any island expedition. But going over to Rider of the Apocalypse, you can choose the on a paler horse talent choice. And this essentially enables mounted combat. You can stay on 
your death knight mount while in combat while in outdoor areas so this doesn't work in dungeons or raids but island expeditions are all outdoors so what you can do is use this hero talent choice get on your mount and just run around hitting everything with howling blast and you never have to stop and wait for enemies because the biggest issue doing this farm before this talent choice is you would have to run around and aggro all of the enemies and as we're much higher level now all of the enemies would actually be harder to aggro you would have to walk basically directly on top of their model to get them to aggro but now since you're staying mounted and can use your abilities you just run around howling blasting everything and it massively reduces the time it takes to do a single island expedition so get a death knight get on the frost spec use the rider of the apocalypse hero talents and that's going to be substantially faster at doing this farm than any other class or spec now to get back to the items we're farming for at the end of every island expedition you'll get a handful of cosmetic items but you'll also get a bag or multiple bags that give you a currency for the system called seafarer doubloons these just allow you to buy more bags of more transmog items that you can sell now you can also increase the amount of seafarer doubloons you can get by getting the island plunder buff so in bfa once you start doing the end game campaign there's a small little skill tree you get to choose different buffs between and one of them is island plunder and this just gives you a chance to get additional seafarers doubloons out of any of these bags so it's not going to massively increase the amount of doubloons you're getting but you'll just randomly get bags that give you double or just a lot more of this currency so if you're trying to do this farm a lot i would generally recommend you go and do that it shouldn't take you that long to get there but you will have to do a little bit of questing now spending these seafarer doubloons is actually a very important part of this farm because you're actually going to get a large chunk of these items you're going to be selling from the bags you use this currency on now these bags switch every week so one week you may have three or four different bags and next week you'll have the three or four completely different bags and there are different rarity of bags that have different costs so 50 all the way up to 175 and the higher rarity of bag generally means it can have more items in it but outside of that you mainly just want to look at all of the different items that can be in the bags because the much cheaper bags can actually give you a lot more value and the reason a lot of these transmogs are so valuable is because a lot of them have unique appearances there are dozens and dozens of different weapons that either have their own unique appearances or they've had different weapons added later on that are recolors but there are still a lot of very sought after weapons and then there are dozens of full transmog sets that you can get from this farm now getting a piece of armor doesn't give you the full transmog set you're just able to get a full transmog set if you get all of the items of that set and there's a very big mix there's a bunch of recolors of old sets which a lot of people want and then there are a handful of completely unique transmog sets so some of these sets can be worth like hundreds of thousands of gold upwards of like 500 or more thousand gold for the whole set so some of these sets are very expensive and i've had multiple times where i would have the full set on the auction house and someone would go buy the entirety of the set and i would just make like multiple wow tokens so keep that in mind as well people will buy these full sets at once if you have them now, in every single one of the bags you're buying with these seafarer doubloons, there are a handful of different items. There'll usually be two or three of the different transmog sets you can get pieces of. A lot of the times it'll be like two full transmog sets and then a few pieces of another. And then there'll be a handful of the weapon transmog sets in them as well. Then usually a handful of pets. The pets are usually the cheapest part of this, but getting some of the more rare pets out of these can also make you a lot of gold. Now, the main way you're going to go about seeing what bags you're actually wanting to open is first off, just search the bag on wowhead go over to contains and the tabs and you'll be able to see every item that is able to be obtained from these bags now the main way to search on the general value of these bags is check the transmog sets and the best way to do this is to go to the website called undermine exchange this website allows you to check the auction house prices for every wow server in the world you can also check on like medium and average prices across your region so you can get a good idea of the prices of all of these different items 
cards. But how I use this for these transmogs specifically is you go to this site, there's a filter and at the bottom you could add region median column. So once you search for any items, it'll add a region median price down at the right side. So you can see a kind of midpoint price across the entirety of the region. And why this is so important is because that we have war bands now, you can very easily make a level one character on any realm in the game, go to your warband bank, transfer currency or any items you have to that character and put those items on a different auction house. And this is generally what I would recommend doing if you want to do this farm a lot, because you'll be getting a lot of duplicates of these transmog items. You don't want to have them all up on one auction house. So what you do make a bunch of level ones and you're selling these transmog items on a bunch of different realms at a time. So seeing the median price is a really good starting point to see general prices of all these sets. So we can just go through an example of how I do this. So this week, there's three different bags you can buy from Island Expeditions. This week, they're all the really expensive ones. So you may also want to save your coins for different weeks. But this week, we can get Yordle Salvage, we can get Crestfall Salvage, and we can get Dread Chain Salvage. Now let's take a look at Dread Chain Salvage. Now all of the items that you can get from these are located on Wildhood very easily. There's a bunch of the transmog weapons, there's pets. The main thing we want to look at is usually the transmog sets. So we have the Frostwind set or a few pieces of that. We have some of the Mistwalker pieces, some of the Tomb Keeper pieces, which I already know Tomb Keeper are pretty cheap. But generally with this set, it would be Frostwind and Miststalker sets. So let's go check those prices. So we go to the Undermine Journal and I already have the Frostwind set searched up and the median price of these is actually pretty good. In fact, the shoulder median price is 250,000 gold. If you actually click on it, you can also see the median and mean on different servers or just US realms in general. General. And this is, let's say, around 250 to 275,000 gold per average for just these shoulders of this set. But the rest of the pieces are pretty expensive 38,000, 23,000, 25, 41, 59, 34, 54. So all of the sets are pretty expensive. So the first set we looked at from this box is really good. But then we can look at another set in Mist Stalker. So you can just type in Mist Stalker and it'll bring up all the pieces. Now, Mist Stalker is even better. So you have the gloves being 100. 140,000 median price. You have the belt being 320,000 median price. The average across US realms is 340,000 gold. And on my server, there hasn't been one of these on for a while. That's why the price is so weird. But 340,000 average price across US realms is crazy. Then 76,000 median, 61,000 median, 52,000, 40,000, 49,000, 30,000. Getting any one of these pieces from opening this bag is going to make you a lot of gold no matter how long it takes to sell. And there are also some pretty highly valuable weapons you can get out of these bags, but because of how much these have been farmed over the years, the weapons have generally gone down a lot more in price. In fact, one of the most expensive and sought after weapons from Island Expeditions is the Plundered Blade of the Northern Kings. I have made legitimately millions of gold just from this item. Back in BFA, when I was still doing this farm to make gold, this blade was selling for like 300,000 gold or more, which was pretty crazy. And now if you go check the price, Price. The average on US realms is a little over 100,000 gold. That's still really good, but keep in mind, this is generally more rare or weapons in general are just more rare than just getting random piece of transmog. But if you did want to get this weapon specifically, the Yordle Salvage actually has a very high chance to drop this, a 29% chance, which is the highest chance item to get out of this specific box. But again, a lot of these transmog items can be worth hundreds of thousands of gold. So that's why I would recommend just look at the armor pieces you can get from these chests, and that's how you determine what chest you're going to want to be farming for. And that's legitimately the entirety of this farm. You're just going to be going, taking a death knight, getting the hero talents you need, running through and clearing these island expeditions as fast as possible. Once you have enough currency to buy the bag you want, buy it, open it up, get a bunch more transmog items, and then you just sell all of those transmog items. They're worth a lot of gold, even though they are transmog items, so they take a bit longer to sell. But as I mentioned, it's so easy to make characters on other realms and transfer service between them that as you start to get duplicates, kits, make more and more characters, and just put up those items on different servers. If you have five of the same item and you put it on five different servers, you're going to sell one of those items much faster than you'd be able to sell one item on one server. Even if the prices are more or less because of the different realms, you're still going to make a lot more gold in the long run because you just sell things much more quickly. But that's the entirety of the farm that's made me millions and millions of gold over the years. So thanks for watching.